speaking of uh, speaking of musical uh, inspirations and idols, uh, Lust for Life, the new record as we mentioned from Lana Del Rey, is available everywhere you get or stream or buy your music. And you have a song. You have some great guest stars on this album, but I, I want to particularly talk about this as Stevie Nicks track because, I mean, you you love her, right? I I do love her, yeah. And how is that for you as the artist on the record, but also as a super fan to kind of be in studio and, and working with her? Are you able to kind of forget for a minute, oh my God, that's Stevie Nicks, and just kind of treat her like another performer? Not not at the time. Not when she came into the studio. I was um I was more nervous than I thought I would be when she came in. Um, Were you able to compartmentalize that, or did it just I was stay at with first, you? but then she asked me to re-sing something, and then I... Oh, no. I got on the microphone in this booth that I'm not usually in, because I usually just sing in the middle of the room, uh-huh. but I was trying to, like, be professional and do it in the ISO booth, and, um, yeah, my first... She just wanted me to do my oohs and ahs over, and my first ah was like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was horrific, and she didn't even say anything, and I said something stupid, like, Oh, God, that sounds so small next to your awe. Uh. And she's like, that's okay. You can be my little echo. And I thought, oh, that's oh, sweet. That was <laughs> and then you immediately got that tattooed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> little echo. <laughs> my heart. So um, when Kevin and I uh, have people on this show that we want to be best friends with, we always in the back of our mind we're thinking, "Oh, this is it! Now that I met this person, right. you know, we're gonna I'm gonna get his phone number. We're gonna start going to lunch." Right? Uh, doesn't really work that way. It doesn't work for us. I'm right. just wondering, like, like are you and Stevie Nicks like friends now? Could you call her if you wanted to at some point? Could totally call her. And wow! I know. I have to say, it's one of these like amazing career and life things where I, I do consider her a friend and I love her and she's. Because you never really know with women how it's going to go, but she just wanted to be there right away, like sent flowers after the track was done, um, got me a present for my birthday. How about that? She's actually the one who, it's funny because she's the one who's so legendary, but she's the one who really put all the extra effort in and didn't make anything hard clearance-wise and... I just had to call her friend to ask, like, are you sure it's all okay? She was like, yep. I was like, okay, I guess we're good. (laughs) They say don't meet your heroes, but in this particular case, that's... I think that's freaking generally true. She's like one of the only people who I could say is an exception to that rule. We are uh, talking me. to a singer-songwriter Lana Del Rey here on the Kevin Amin Show. Again, Lust for Life is the album available everywhere. In a couple minutes, we'll talk about some upcoming shows and give away some tickets. I want to ask you one more Stevie Nicks question before we have to take a quick break, Lana, and yeah. that is, and I don't want to make too much of this, and I'm in no way making fun, but you guys have witchiness in common. We and do. a lot of people love to write about that. Is <laughs> okay, do. the witches got together. <laughs> I know, uh, they love that. I don't want to put words in your mouth, so why don't you tell me what that means? Well, I mean, we both have a flair for the dramatic And um, she, I mean, like, I saw her on stage um, with Fleetwood Mac last week at Dodger Stadium, and she definitely has a way about her on stage. I'm not saying that I have that same way, but you can tell she's a little bit of a mystic at heart, Mm -hmm. I would would say. I mean, not to speak for her, but, and I definitely have, you know, I've had, like, a long-time interest in all things ancient and occult, like so many people, and um, I guess I draw... I draw on a little bit of that inspiration for my music and for um, whatever. I love to read up on stuff like that. So, yeah, the the two witches got together. (laughs) (laughs) Can I just say that she used to come and do shows with my uncles and cousins. And as a little girl, I would take pictures with my little camera and then get it developed. And the pictures would come back she was blurry in all Stop. of them not Whoa. kidding oh, it was probably me being you're so ter- yes. no being so freaked out i was shaking <laughs> taking pictures of her but i like four years i'm old. telling you it has stuck with me my entire life i'm like she's such a total witch it's isn't that best. interesting yeah, yeah. so did people. you take any pictures with her no but but you know what i did take a uh, iphone video of myself singing to her music on the way and I was show her whole thing was out of focus thank you Good what night, everybody. Is happening? Good right. night. This just turned into a Halloween show. What's Either happening you're, right I'm now? Telling you. Maybe you're both maybe, bad photographers, maybe. or <laughs> possibly, or or I'm right, and that's proof. <laughs> good night. Have a good night, everybody. I mean, that's one of the possibilities. I think so, and I love it so much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, more from uh, Lana Del Rey. We're going to return a quick break right after this on K Rock. Lana Del Rey and love on the world famous K Rock 106.7 K R O Q at 24 minutes after 8 o'clock. 
And Lana Del Rey is here in studio with us here on the world-famous Kirok, back with a new record called Lust for Life. It didn't seem, am I wrong about this, Lana? It didn't seem like it took very long for this record compared to the wait we have waited in between previous albums, no? Mm, maybe close to the same. I okay. Think it felt like it felt like it took forever to write. I think I spent a lot more days consecutively in the studio for this one. But it was it was probably two years ago, like down to the day that I put out um, Honeymoon. Yeah. I know that uh, that everybody's latest album is usually their favorite album. It's the music that they're most excited about singing and sharing and talking about. But did this one seem different to you in some way compared to other records? Uh, yeah, it did. It felt different. I mean, I was glad that the like the general vibe of it didn't end up being too different from the first few records I did, but... Was that um, a conscious choice? No, I feel like the melodies and the and the production were just kind of following what I had been thinking about over the last year and a half. But um, I did. I kind of, kind of thought I knew where the record was going, and then like fourteen months into it, it took took like a turn for me stylistically. So I wasn't really sure uh, where we were going to end up. But I really love it. I've got like a couple songs on there, like Coachella, um, that I love the production for. Um, or a song called Cherry. Again, I love like the the kind of bluesy vibe in the production. So I f I'm happy does, with where. Does I'm it going. scare you a little bit when the process takes a turn? Yeah. Because actually, you, it's never really done that so much. It hasn't. quite so much for me as as it did with this one. Because it seems like you spend so much time heading in one direction, and then all of a sudden it. She's not in one direction, Kevin. You're I didn't not tell what I was saying. This is Lana Del Rey. That's not what I was saying. Attention. It's on your paperwork. I'm saying you go for a long time yeah. with something in mind, and all of a sudden it changes. Yeah, it's true. Are you easily open to that kind of thing? I don't think I was before, but I was with this one. Oh, neat. Yeah. Um, it's a very generous album, too, in that there are 16 songs. And you said the other night at Amoeba that you have, I think you said something like 25 other songs that you worked on that didn't make the record. No, I, I've got about five that didn't, but like I have... Tw the, sometimes um, some of the younger fans they, they always ask me about um, the unreleased songs that got leaked. So oh, well, I, sure. I was gotcha. saying, yeah. you know, I might, I might at some point just release some of those songs because I love them. Okay. <laughs> if, yeah. Um, speaking of uh, speaking of Amoeba, one more time, we sent uh, a beer mug who works here on the show down to that line that we talked about of okay. people waiting in line to see you, and we asked them, we gave them the opportunity oh, really? to ask you a question. Would you mind if we hear from a couple of your fans? Oh yeah. And see cool. what their questions are. Unfortunately, I don't have their names, but hopefully they are listening since they know you're on K Rock here this morning. So let's hear question number one. How do you come up with your album titles? <laughs> and are they connected? I guess would be another uh, a, a, another aside on that question cute that you got the audio from them um <laughs> how do i come up with the album titles well generally uh i i like an album title that i think is gonna sort of um point to a general like aesthetic that i can um like a world i can build within lyrically and sonically so i knew i wanted this record to kind of i, I mean i think probably midway through it, it was sounding a little bit lighter than say Born to Die, and one of the tracks I had was called <laughs> Lust for Life, so I thought, I, you know, it'd be kind of a cool full circle thing to call this one. And uh, you did that one with life. The weekend. I did, yeah, and I didn't know if that was going to be weird to, like, have a feature on the title track, but... Was it before or after he got his haircut? <laughs> you know what? It was right after. Right after. I, I said, think it looks this better. Is, this is going to change your life. <laughs> I, right? right? Exactly. I was like, you're going to be able to go anywhere now. Exactly. <laughs> Do you like baseball caps? You're going to be able to... It's a whole new world for the weekend. Go to Yum Yum Donuts down the street. <laughs> no problem. All right. Uh, next question from one of your fans at Abiba. What is the weirdest thing a fan has ever said to you or done to you or oh. something of that nature? <laughs> something that of that nature. That was dangerous. Wow. Talk about taking a turn. I know. Um, let's see. Um... Well, home, like homemade cookies, usually. Don't I, eat them. I don't take them. <laughs> don't it's a judge nice gesture, me. but don't I, eat them. Hypochondriac. <laughs> um, what else? There are a couple of other, um, couple of other weird. I Any tattoos know. among your fans? Lana Del Rey tattoos. I think we have a lot of tattoos. Whoa! I, I think so. Yeah, we got wow. some hand tats. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, one more. Um, if she could make a, a duet with any artist that she loves, dead or alive, who would it be and why? Dead or alive? I think she just said alive, which is, come on, <laughs> why? <laughs> a weird Pick qualification, a wasn't it? <laughs> um, you know who I really love is Joni Mitchell. 
Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I don't really know what she's up to her. She had a very serious health scare a couple of years I ago. I remember Very serious, that. but came back and now is in public, and we've seen her a little bit. I don't know how much singing she's doing yeah. anymore, but she seems like she's on the mend, which is great. She's one of the the legends of all time. So, totally. boy, I can't imagine. That would be fantastic. Yeah. All right, tell us about these uh, shows you just announced on uh, Friday. you got uh, two Southern California shows coming up. Yep, I'm going to do a couple of shows. Um, they're both at uh, House of Blues. Uh, one is in San Diego, one's in Anaheim. They're just kind of club shows. Um, yes, I'm going to do that uh, tonight, I guess, and tomorrow. Yes, the one at uh, House of Blues Anaheim is tomorrow night at 7 p.m., and we have tickets for that. Amazing. Yes, we do. If you want to go see Lana Del Rey tomorrow night, Tuesday, August 1st, you can call us right now at one 800 520 one zero six seven to win this pair of tickets. Lana, pick a number between one and a hundred, please. One and a hundred, uh, sixty-six. Call her sixty-six. Win the Lana Del Rey tickets, man. You just made our phone screener's life miserable. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't have been number four, could it, Lana? <laughs> That's what ticket two goes to. <laughs> all right, call her sixty-six. You win. Uh, all right, is that it? Do we cover everything? Are we good? Is everyone happy? I believe so. I think so. Lana, did you have a nice time? Yeah, thank you for um, having me down here. It's our pleasure. Thank you for continuing to make great music, and thanks again for playing the Weenie Roast. I hope we see you again. For sure. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, guys.